It's time for Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock. Believe me when I say we have a difficult time ahead of us. But if we are to be prepared for it, we must first shed our fear of it. I stand here without fear because I remember. I remember that I am here not because of the path that lies before me, but because of the path that lies behind me. I remember that for 100 years we have fought these machines. And after a century of war, I remember that which matters most. We are still here! One day closer, one day closer, we have downloaded today. We're just now the first day yesterday. We bought, got it and ready to rock and roll and whatnot for Freedom's Phoenix Magazine. I got to tell you about this before we get to the news today, which is, you know, Osama. And, and, and am I allowed not to care? Because I just know that, I mean, these are some of the stories, okay? Um, why are we... He's unarmed. We kill him, but then we're interrogating his wife. <laughs> and, okay. And then the Obama administration is, we're not going to show the photographs. We are going to show the pho- photographs. It's all about change the lead, change the lead. What's the story? If they show the photographs, well, you get, you know, day, two, week, whatever. If you don't show the photographs, you got another week or two dragging out. You got to show the photographs. But we don't show the photographs because then people, you know, would kill us and we got to be on lockdown and every monument and everywhere around the planet and any United States people, you shouldn't travel. You can't because, 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 because what? Because of a freaking empire with M16s on everybody's corner. Then we have Pope John Paul II deserves assist for bin Laden hit. Peru president says a U.S. military mission that cornered and killed Osama bin Laden in Pakistan was nothing short of a miracle, says Peru's president, Alan Garcia, who attributed divine intervention to newly beautified pontiff John Paul II. Is this where we're going? I mean, you know, is there any and and I and I'm I'm about ready to put a moratorium on bin laden on freedom's phoenix i'm like you know seriously it better be something good man i mean you know everybody's you know because we put the stuff up there just to show the absurdity of a lot of this stuff it's not because you know i mean why else will we do it because i we have this all arc i tell you i give you an example throughout the years we have been covering uh Osama bin Laden and the war on terror and all this. And we put it down. You have different categories. You know, it might go under imperialism as a category. It might go under Bush administration or Obama administration or, or terror or about that war or something. It depends. You know, it's, it's kind of, you know, sometimes you'll have it in the CIA category. But on Freedom's Phoenix, just because you see the category of the entry up there and it may say, Federal Reserve, or it may say terrorism, or it may say something. That's not the only category. We have up to three categories that we can put stories in. So when you have something about Obama administration, Obama selects Panetta to go over here and and Petraeus to go here, and and we'll talk about that today. My guest is Melvin Goodman at the bottom of the first hour here. We'll have him on for an hour. And he's going to be assessing Panetta at the Pentagon and Petraeus at the CIA. Now, Mel Goodman is best known for his most recent book. It was A Failure of Intelligence, The Decline and Fall of the CIA. Now, he is uh, he is CIA, isn't he? He was? You know, yeah, I think so. We're, we're go, I'll get the old intro and everything all up to speed on this. We've had him on before. And, and I'm looking forward to this conversation because that's what I really want to talk about. Are these guys really, you know, the the best, the brightest that's going to, you know, we're going to fix or make better or we're safer because this guy moved from here to there and they went to this, is that, or is it political? Are we gearing up for the 2012 election cycle? Is there something else going on? We got to get the boy that's on the plantation. Got to have people that's taking orders, you know? So, And what would those orders be? So that's where we'll go with that in a half hour. So we'll get down the serious stuff. But, you know, now my thing is, is <clears throat> we have these guys 
uh, make them whatever news that they're doing and we get the administration and their take on this and you know we're at orange alert red alert we got to search trunks of any car that's going into Sky Harbor International Airport I remember one time they shut down the air because something was going on in Miami you know oh we got to threat Miami and it was a guy named Frank Navarrete that was the Homeland Security liaison for the state of Arizona that answered to Ridge when they first started that and I had him on the show and it went an hour with, you know, he was not comfortable. He didn't know, he didn't know what the heck was going on. Because at the time when I was on the radio station here, there was a show that our sheriff, Sheriff Jewer Pio, you know, had a show. Well, he was on that. It's the same, you know, station. They think it's the same kind of thing. Well, yeah, of course I'll go on with one of your other talk show hosts. What's his name? Ernie Hanker. Yeah, I've heard them talk about, yeah, whatever. You know, it's the same station as Sheriff Jewer Pio. So he came on. I'm like, look, man, warning, you know, it's not the same thing. <laughs> so we went, we went into it three weeks or God, it was like a week. And it was immediately after that. And he kind of alluded that this was building up. He went to Washington. All of a sudden they get the conference call and all the boom, we're on orange alert. And I specifically asked him, I'm going, you know, um, what happens when uh, this happens in like Florida, you're talking about, why does Oregon Washington State, Montana, Arizona have to shut down their airport and start looking at everybody coming in through their uh, trunk of their car crap. You know what? What? Which is what happened. Well, it got so bad. Even Janet Napolitano, now head of Homeland Security, as governor here, she's like, "This didn't. You know, this is not popular. This is not working out for me." And you know, heck, no, we're not doing this anymore. A lot of states did that. And I asked him, I go, "What happens when a governor says no?" Oh, I wouldn't recommend that. Well, who are you working for? Uh, recommend that because of what? I mean, is the Soviet Union? Is this World War II and Nazis go into you know Poland or whatever or France and they they say no and you get the you got to go to the concentration camp or in Russia you got to go to you know Siberia? I mean, what happens? Well, uh, I go, who do you work for? And he goes, well, I work for the state. There's a paycheck comes state of Arizona. Well, of course, it's money that's given to him from the federal government, and then it kind of goes through them. But I, I go, okay. So if a governor says no, then what? Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Who do they really work for? And what obligation do governors have? I mean, you didn't see that they did that again because they were like, no, we're not playing. People weren't buying it. We got to threat Miami. So we're shutting down the airport. We're, we're, we're freaking Nazi Germany, you know, uh, Israel, whatever, man. It's a like gun at every entrance and, you know, ain't no probes. So now they're doing the scanning thing. Well, that's just to make money, you know, ka-ching. You know, last time I flew, the guy, when I opted out, the guy said, he goes, yep, everybody, we got to go through the scanner. We pay billions of dollars for the scanner. Everyone wants to go through the scanner. We're going through the scanner. Yeah, they may be. I'm not. So this is, this is, of course, I missed a flight, but, you know, after, you know, all the, yeah, that's a long story. But the, uh, the point is, is that I can see there's something else going on. We had all these stories building up that would chronicle a lot of this. You could see that a trend of how they're going to use these stories. When Osama finally, you know, they thawed out his body off a CIA shelf somewhere or whatever, and, you know, here it goes. You know, I, what, I don't, you know, you, what, you're going to believe him on something? I mean, at, at what point do all of a sudden they become credible? Whatever they say, you know, on anything. So I, you know, I, I just don't care. But the inconsistencies start coming out. You start asking certain questions. Oh, man, it's all. But is that what you're seeing on cable news? Heck no. Oh, here's the building. Here's it. The million dollar house that you could buy here in America for, you know, $70,000. I'm like, you know, that's a million dollars in Pakistan. Man, they got a bigger real estate bubble than we do. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You know, yeah, but it's the tallest building, uh, you know, this piece of crap, you know, whatever. All right, fine. So, What's our biggest traffic on Freedom's Phoenix? It's the archive. And the reason why we did it the way we did, it's great research. When you look at our traffic and where it's going to, it is all of the research and all the stories that we've been tracking of all these things of the CIA, the Bush administration, the Obama administration, Osama bin forgotten, all this stuff, the graphics, the photos that we have everything all of a sudden 
My traffic's gone up 30% on news that's years old because no one else was tracking this. We'll be right back.